verses, but the rest are just paraphrases. Amen. But I want to give my message a, a topic. I'll call it a new dawn in the life of Israel. A new dawn in the life of Israel. Or a new beginning in the life of Israel. So I want you to place your name. Where Israel is, you place your name there. So the Bible says in the book of Joshua chapter 3, verses 9. Actually, the whole text talks about crossing the what? The Jordan. Jordan was a, a river that the Israelites were supposed to cross on their way to their promised land. And this was Joshua. Remember God called Joshua after the, the death of who? The death of Moses. Now, first, my message will be based uh, on verse 9. Joshua chapter 3, verse 9. That's where he wants us to, to really talk about. Whereby, Joshua commanded the children of Israel to come and listen to the words of who? The words of God. So we come, we gather in, in the presence of God this morning to come and hear the words of God. God gave Joshua a word for Israel since he had a great relationship with God. God had a look at the life of Joshua and he saw Joshua to be the best, perfect person to take the children of Israel to the promised land because he was uh, working close hand in hand with Moses and he saw the God of Moses and he totally believed that this God, God of Moses, as much as God has told me to, take the children of Israel to the promised land, I believe, and uh, I really believe that whatever he did to Moses, he will also do it to me. No matter, no matter, uh, no matter, no wonder when you hear God speaking to Moses, me to Joshua, Joshua does not complain like Moses. Is it? Moses was like, God, uh, I'm just a stammerer, how will I speak? I'm not eloquent. But Joshua, has not complained. And I have not seen it in my Bible. Joshua complained any God. Oh God, I can't. God, this church is too difficult for me. It never happened that way. The reason being, Joshua had seen the God of who? Moses. Joshua had seen God uh, do miracles through Moses, perform miracles through Moses, and he believed 100% that this God, the same God who was with Moses, will also be with me the way God had told him. So this morning, as I have said in Joshua 3, uh, verse 9, we've come in the presence of God this morning to hear from the word of God. We've come to hear from God this morning. Now, what does the word of God say? The word of God says a lot of things concerning our lives. It doesn't matter the kind of desert that you are going through. We could be going through a wilderness, we could be going through the Jordan. Remember, Jordan is a kind of a place you are in life where things seem to be very hard, where things seem to be very difficult. It's like whether you turn left or right, things are not moving. Like uh, in our present economy today, what you nasema maramingi, mambo haifanyi nini, haiendi. Because of the what? The difficult situation that the country is in. Actually, the economy is not favorable to all, to some people. But I thank God because by the grace of God, it will be favorable for us because we are the children of God. Amen. So, it's like uh, the Jordan. So this Jordan was not passable. It was impassable to the children of Israel. The Bible says it used to flood, especially during the harvest time. During the harvest time, it used to rain heavily. It was snowing all over. It was cold. Huh? So you can imagine, and the Bible says it used to uh, kind of, uh, it used to become, uh, the rains were so heavy, and it could uh, even break its what? Its river banks. Yeah? In Africa, twice the way it used to be normally. So remember, the children of Israel want to cross this uh, Jordan. Jordan has kind of solid. What tunasema, mutu wa nini? In Africa. And when a river is swollen, we are normally told that you should not do what? Cross such a river. After what Nambio Magali Sifanyanini is to cross. You remember what has happened to our country of lakes? Recently, we had there were some geckos that were being swept away by the what? The floods. Because some rivers were swollen and it was advised by the Red Cross, who are the Awatu. If you want to manage it, you may take a few of 
blood. Hata kama una blood you should not do what cross because you can easily uh, uh, you can easily be drowned. So it was like the same in the eyes of Israel. Jordan was solid. Jordan had it had rain. It was during winter. It was snowy and it was a terrible kind of a very terrible uh, scenario in the eyes of Israel. But Joshua is here telling the people they are going to do what to cross the, the river. What would come into your mind? Supposing you go a it was not what it was not possible. Probably the Israelites were like wondering, how are we going to cross with our young children? What about our old people? What about the animal, the possessions, the property that we have? Remember when they left Egypt, they left with a lot of what? Property. They had in the mirror. They even had um, what? God had commanded them to, to borrow or take gold. Was it gold rings from? The women would take gold rings from uh, the other women in Egypt so that they could move along there. So when they were leaving Egypt, they were very rich. Amen. The Bible said they plundered the what? The Egyptians. So they were wondering with this Jordan, how do we cross such a solid river, such a river that is over flooded? We might be swept easily. So the same applies to us. We come across a lot of Jordans in our lives. I don't know what your Jordan is this morning. But the word of God says, nothing is impossible with who? With God. We serve a God of impossibility. So as much as the Israelites were afraid, were fearful to pass the, uh, the Jordan, they were even confused. And they were like, we are not going to pass this river. Because it's too uh, swollen. If you happen to cross, we might end up doing what? We might end up dying. But I want to encourage you this morning. On this day of 8th of May, I think it's 8th of May, the year 2022. But Joshua remembered the same God who dried the Red Sea will also dry the what? The Jordan. Amen. So the same God who did it in the times of Joshua, in the times of Moses, is the same God who is going to dry your Jordan today. Amen. Amen. Now that your Jordan could be what? Financial constraint, yeah? Your children could be lack of peace in your heart, in your life, in your family. Mambo ya mekata kuwenda, kanya yeni, ya mesimamu, yeah? But the, because we have God, we serve a God who drives what? The Red Sea, the God who drives the Jordan. This God was able to make a way when there seemed to be no way, to be no way. The same God who worked in the days of Israel is the same God who is going to work in our what? in our lives today. Concerning your situation, I want to encourage the church today that never give up because we serve a God of who? A God of impossibility. So number one point, I want you to know this. The word of God, what does the word of God say? Remember Joshua told the people, come here and listen to the word of God. So number one, uh, number one uh, point that I want to say, the word of God is what? Is hope. The word of God is hope. Where there is hopeless, where things seem to be a tough, where things seem to be not moving, not yielding the results they want. The Bible says the word of God is what? Hope. If you read Psalm 125, verse 1 to 2, because of time you will not read all those scriptures, but you can just write them somewhere. Psalm 125, verses 1 to 2, we are saying the word of God is hope. Then you can also write Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 6. You can be somewhere too. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 6. Then you also have Psalm chapter 124, verses 1 to 1 to 3. So my point, my emphasis is that the word of God is hope. Where there is no hope, God remains to be our hope. Amen. Our hope of glory. Where things seem not to move, our God remains to be the hope in our Lives where you have lost hope is like uh, everything has turned against you. God remains to be faithful, and He will still create a way where there seems to be no no way. The Bible says the Israelites, God had commanded the Levites to carry the one the ark of the covenant, so that these children of Israel could follow that ark and know the way where to go. So the ark simply represents what? 
the presence of God. So in that difficult moment, in that difficult situation where we could be, where our children have really pinned us down, where it's like we are in the wilderness. Now, Joe, when you are in the wilderness, it's very dry. Akuna Machu Mahali, it's very dry, it's very sunny. Yeah? There are wild animals that can kill you anytime. When you go to wilderness, like for desert, you come across very uh, poisonous what? snakes. Like what I was talking about from very dry areas. You have very poisonous snakes there. So that's a kind of a, a wilderness that you would be in. But thanks to God, because our God faith remains to be a faithful, a faithful God. Whatever we go through now is only here for a moment. Even if it's not pity or two, it has not come to stay. Amen. As long as the gospel and assembly in a pity and a woman, as long as some of the pity and a king of your family, who your simana, amen. So as you are passing through that, God remains to be a faithful God, and there will be light at the end of the tunnel, as we say, amen. So I was saying the ark of the covenant represented what the presence of God. So I want to encourage the church this morning that amid this all that we are going through. When things seem to be against you, it's like you turn left, right, center, everything is working against you. God remains to be God. But continue dwelling in the presence of God. What we are going through today, what I'm going through today, probably I've never been there. The last 10 years, it's like things may not be working. We've never been there before. Remember that Israel had never been in such a, a place like Jordan, wanted to cross that one, that particular river. So what uh, God tells the Israelites are the Levites to go before the people so that they could give them the, what, the way because they had never been there before. Now it has just reminded me recently, the past two years, to liquor and corona. We had never heard of what? Corona. We had never been there before. Yeah. So the whole world had never been there. So you are like, how are we going to cross this world? Jordan. We don't look at the sphere so it was like all human beings will die. Yeah, we had of people who died. But I thank God, the God of mercy. Yeah. And actually we want to part of us a revelation. Remember social distance and like one that the Bible says God told the people not to come near the earth. They are. At least we'll keep me this time. We'll keep social Amen. So the people kept the social distance so that they could see what? The ark of the covenant moving. But I thank God because of obedience. The obedience and Joshua, God helping Joshua that the people believed him. Remember when you were here, if the God of Moses atakuwa na we, we shall go with you. But if not, leave us here today. Amen? But I thank God because the God of Moses was also with the God of, the God of Moses was together with Joshua and he was able to bring the children of Israel in the promised land. The promised land. Number two point, I want you to know this. The word of God is here. It doesn't matter the Jordan they were going through. That sickness could have been like a Jordan. It could have been like a desert. I see Dawa. You've tried all means. It's like that kind of sickness in the Katakutoka Kominiako, Ama Mini Yamtokoako, Ama wherever kind of sickness. But the Bible says our God is Jehovah who? Jehovah Rapha. He heals all our diseases. You read Psalm chapter 103, verses 3. The Bible says, He heals all our what? Our diseases. It doesn't matter how tough, how terrible. Hata kama hiyo ugoja haina dawa. Corona haikuwa na dawa. But by the grace of God, we are alive. Because God, the God, the Jehovah Rapha, came upon the world, came upon the earth, and you were able to do what? To survive. Men try to treat our God will always give what the living. So uh, uh, the words of God that Joshua came telling the people was that the word of God is also what? Healing. It doesn't matter how long you've been ailing. 
it doesn't matter how long that patient that you have has been having that particular problem. But once you put your faith in God, our God is a healing book. It's a healing God. It's Jehovah Rapha. He heals all. The Bible says all our sicknesses, not some, but all. All the sicknesses, all the diseases. Only if we put our trust in Him, we shall see Him heal our land, we shall see Him heal our bodies and heal all our what? Our sicknesses. Only if we believe the report of God. Amen. At times we believe the report of the doctor so much until to Nasahau report your nanny, report your mum. But I thank God because God is, is encouraging us this morning, this afternoon, to believe in His word. Because His word talks about healing, His word talks about hope, where there seems to be uh, no hope, God brings in healing. Where things seem not to work, God still, there is still chance for God to work miracles in our lives. Amen. So I want to encourage the church this morning that it's a new day. It's a new season. It's a new dawn in your life. In my life and in your life. Remember you represent Israel. Amen. This is what the Kizaz Chanani Israel. So it's a new dawn in your life as an Israelite. And Joshua here being our father in faith, Moses has been our father in faith, Jacob uh, earlier on was our father in faith, it is telling us it is a new dawn for all of us. It is a new beginning. Whatever we've been through, let's forget about what has passed, what has gone, uh, what has passed, maybe it left us with some wounds. You know, at times we go through things, so let's, let's not think about that anymore. Because the God that we serve is a God who is hope. He's a God who will bring healing to our ailing heart, our bleeding heart, our broken heart. Our God is able to make them back into whatever that we desire us to be. Remember, God has good intentions for us. Jeremiah says, he has better what? Better plan. So no matter the situation that we are going through today, remember God still has better plans for you. Plans to prosper you and not plans to do what? To harm you. Plans to give you a future and a good work. Hope. The hope that we are talking about today. So our God is a faithful God. I just want to encourage the church this morning that whatever we go through, it doesn't matter the desert, it doesn't matter the Jordan, but our God remains to be God. Only when you put your trust upon him, he still remains to be a faithful one. God. Joshua never bothered. As much as Israel was complaining and grumbling, I never came across Joshua doing the work. The same. Because he believed in the God of who? Moses. And he knew at a point, this God of Moses will also be able to help me whenever things are not what? Moving. So he was well able and he was ready to take over the task that God had assigned to him to take the children of Israel to the promised land. Amen. Amen. Another point, let me just talk about uh, one final point because of our time. Then God will bless us. The word of God is life. Joshua tells the children of Israel, come and hear, listen to the words of what? Words of God. So the word of God is life. The Bible says, we shall not die, but we shall do what? We shall need to declare the works of God in our lives. Oh, well, whenever God gives you a chance to serve you, amen, that is his word. The word of God is life. We've come in his presence this morning. God has given us another chance to live, that we may serve him, because this God is God that gives what? Gives life. His intention for him, his purpose for him creating um, you and I, for him bringing you this far on such like a day like today is for you to serve him, for you to trust upon him, no matter the situation that we are going through. The word of God, the word of God remains to be what? To be life. He gives life even to the dead. You remember the dry bones? Ezekiel and the dry what? Bones. God took me to Ezekiel asking him, son of man, can this bones play? Amen. God is a God of what? Life, he gives life. So the bones were able to live because of the word of God, which is life. So that situation that we are going through right now as I'm speaking, 
I also have my own rhythm. Yene? Atu yaki yu kona ya? Kona yako. So somehow this wilderness has become lifeless. It has like, uh, it's not giving uh, any hope, any future, any more. But the Bible says the word of God is life. So God is going to resurrect whatever is dead or was dead in your life because it is his word. His word. Whatever he says, he does what? He fulfills. He's a covenant keeping God. Whatever he promised, remember Abraham, he still fulfilled that because he's a covenant keeping who? God. Amen. So we serve a God who is a covenant keeping God. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Though it may tarry, but surely at one point in life it will do what? It will come to pass. So I just want to encourage us this morning, this afternoon, that let's continue hoping in God because He's a God who makes a way. He's a God of life. He's a God who gives what? He gives hope. It doesn't matter what we've been through. It doesn't matter the kind of life that we are, you and I are living today. But we are, talk, and we are looking forward. We are looking upon this God, a God who will never disappoint you. He's not a man that he can lie. Amen. A man can lie to you today. But when God says it is yes, it becomes what? Yes. A man can tell you yes today, lakini kesha nasema, no. Nasema kakini si kusema. But God remains to be a faithful what? God. Because he has better plans for us. So let's continue trusting upon this God. Let's continue calling upon him and uh, continue trusting in him. Continue being in his presence whenever he calls you to do his work. Whenever he calls us to come and hear his words like in his presence today, we should not, uh, we should not uh, fail to come. But we should, we should come and hear the word of God. Amen. So I thank God so much. And I want to say that it's a new beginning in your life. It's a new dawn in your life. Whatever has passed, what I ended up by God's be, by God's. But let God remain to be a true God. Because we know that He will fulfill our heart's desires because it is what? It is His work. Amen.